Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com, the climate guy setting the record straight about climate. This video is titled, Fake Models, Fake Science, Fake Scientists. Heidi Cullen's website, Climate Central, says, Current emissions determine future temperatures. Find out about future hot days in your city here. More hot days are coming with climate change. Our choices will decide how many. Climate Central has developed a new web interactive tool that brings the reality of future heat to hometowns across the U.S. Simply enter the name of your city, town, or hamlet, or any place in the lower 48 that piques your curiosity. To see how the number of hot days above summer temperature thresholds will change throughout the rest of the century. The interactive also shows how reducing greenhouse gas emissions can help reduce the heat. So what Heidi Cullen is saying is that the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is what controls the number of hot days. She's saying that she can predict the number of hot days 82 years in the future. And she's saying it's our choices are going to determine the number of hot days. Let's take a closer look at that and see if what she's saying is true. The same article has this graph showing that the number of days above 105 degrees in Dallas-Fort Worth will increase from about 1 up to 50 or 60 in the next 82 years. Instead of making arm-waving predictions about the number of 105 degree days in Dallas over the next 82 years, let's look at how they've changed over the last 82 years. This graph shows the summer percent of days above 105 degrees over the last 82 years at Weatherford, Texas, which is just west of Fort Worth. It's the closest United States Historical Climatology Network station to the Fort Worth area. What this graph shows us is that the Fort Worth area used to have a lot of 105 degree days. Back in the 1950s, they were very common. The last year where there were a lot of them was in 1980. So the frequency of 105 degree days in the Fort Worth area has plummeted over the last 82 years and almost never happened anymore. And this occurred while carbon dioxide was increasing. So if anything, the relationship indicates to us that as carbon dioxide increases, the number of 105 degree days decreases. This is the exact opposite of what Heidi Cullen is claiming. So now let's look at the two graphs side by side. This is what Heidi Cullen is predicting for the next 82 years as carbon dioxide increases a huge increase in the number of 105 degree days. And the graph on the right is the number of 105 degree days over the last 82 years, which is the exact opposite relationship. There is no scientific basis to Heidi Cullen's claim. So maybe Fort Worth is a fluke. Let's look at the data for the entire United States. This graph is the number of 95 degree days at all 1200 United States Historical Climatology Network stations versus time. And once again, we see the same relationship. As carbon dioxide has increased, the number of hot days has plummeted in the United States. The hottest summer in U.S. history was in 1936. Throughout the entire year, 10% of days across the United States were above 95 degrees. That means that every station in the U.S. averaged about 36 days during that summer, which were above 95 degrees. That's an incredible statistic, incomprehensible by modern standards. We also had a very hot year in 1954, and the last really hot year in the United States was 1980. 95 degree days have become very rare across most of the United States, particularly over the last five years. But back in the 1930s and 1950s, 95 degree days were quite common. In fact, in 1936, Wisconsin had temperatures of 113 degrees. North Dakota had temperatures of 121 degrees. Those sort of temperatures are incomprehensible now outside of the desert southwest and the southern Great Plains. So now let's look at the trend of 95 degree days across the United States prior to 1936. There was a sharp increase from 1895 to 1936, and since 1936 there's been a sharp decline. So had you made a prediction in 1936 based on past trends, you probably would have predicted that the number of hot days would have kept increasing. But it's done the exact opposite. The number of hot days in the United States has plummeted over the last 82 years. That's what makes Heidi Cullen's prediction so ridiculous. She's going against the current trend. 
Going back to this slide, over the last 82 years, as carbon dioxide has increased, the number of hot days has decreased. And she's predicting that over the next 82 years, due to an increase in carbon dioxide, there'll be a huge increase in the number of hot days. But the data shows that she's wrong. There's no empirical evidence backing up Heidi Cullen's prediction. It's based entirely on climate models, which have been shown over and over again to be useless. In 1974, scientists were also talking about climate change, but it wasn't global warming back then, it was global cooling. In 1974, scientists from practically every government agency, the National Science Foundation, and just about every other science organization were predicting global cooling in a new ice age. 49 top scientists from the National Science Foundation wrote a letter to President Nixon warning of a new ice age within 100 years. And NASA's top climate scientist, Rasool, was even more aggressive. He predicted a new ice age by the year 2020. But there were some dissenters. One of the best known dissenters was Jewel Charney, professor of meteorology at MIT. He said, I don't think we can predict climate now, and I wouldn't trust anyone who said he could. The atmosphere is just too complex to take some of these vague statistics and try to use them to predict with. And he said anyone who says he can tell you more than a few days ahead of time what the weather is going to be is practicing necromancy, which is talking to the dead. Now let's look at Heidi Cullen's profile on Twitter. She's the author of a book, The Weather of the Future, which Jewel Charney says is equivalent to talking to the dead. And in 1974, another Princeton researcher dismissed such predictions as hand-waving, lacking in support of data. If you speak out too loudly every time you suspect the cause of something, people won't listen to you after a while. We're talking about man's impact on climate, but nature has been causing trends such as ice ages all by herself for thousands of years. Nobody knows what the weather is going to be in the distant future. As Joel Charney pointed out, atmospheric models start to break down about 72 hours in the future. And Heidi Cullen's claiming that she can forecast the weather 82 years in the future. It's bad enough that this snake oil saleswoman, Heidi Cullen, is making weather predictions 82 years in the future, but she's making predictions which are the exact opposite of what the empirical data shows. As carbon dioxide has increased over the last 82 years, the number of hot days has plummeted. And if Heidi Cullen's junk science isn't bad enough, her story gets much worse. She's tried to bully other scientists into going along with her scam. This article about Heidi Cullen is from the U.S. Senate Committee on Environment and Public Works from 2007. Weather Channel climate expert calls for decertifying global warming skeptics. The Weather Channel's most prominent climatologist is advocating that broadcast meteorologists be stripped of their scientific certification if they express skepticism about predictions of man-made catastrophic global warming. This latest call to silent skeptics follows a year, 2006, in which skeptics were compared to Holocaust deniers and Nuremberg-style war crime trials were advocated by several climate alarmists. The Weather Channel's Heidi Cullen, who hosts the weekly global warming program The Climate Code, is advocating that the American Meteorological Society revoke the seal of approval for any television weatherman who expresses skepticism that human activity is creating a climate catastrophe. So this is how the global warming scam consensus has been created. The most important piece is that huge amounts of money has been poured into research grants to scientists who go along with the scam. And the other half has been people like Heidi Cullen threatening and intimidating scientists who go against her scam. There's no scientific basis to Heidi Cullen's claims that the number of hot days will increase as carbon dioxide increases. The data shows the exact opposite. These people are fake scientists using fake models to push fake science. Congress needs to stop funding this junk science. That's the key to ending this scam. Visit Toto on the web at realclimatescience.com. He's been pulling back the curtain on junk science for a long time.